Hello everyone. This hour on Verbling, the next in my Learning Through Pictures series, telling an anecdote about food. We're going to try to take the vocabulary that we've learned and what we've learned about tastes, and what we've learned about the process of making something and put it all together in an anecdote, a personal anecdote about something that you make or something that was made for you in your culture. It would be really interesting to, well, we've done a little bit of this yesterday, so it would be really interesting to hear of some other local dishes, and especially if they're personal to you in some way. It's not only interesting, but it'll also help you remember all the vocabulary that we're learning. So I'll post a link to our notes document in the chat window if you want to open it. And let me do a quick introduction about myself. My name's John Eric. I'm your verbally teacher for this hour and I'm an American teacher from New York, hanging out from Lisbon, Portugal, to bring you this class. And here are three quick rules to help you participate in my class. Don't forget to turn off, tune in, and open up. Which means, rule number one, turn off your microphone whenever you're not speaking so that we can keep the noise of the classroom to an absolute minimum, because there's a lot of noise. If I say your connection sounds good, then you can keep it on. No problem. And you can turn it on whenever you want to speak, of course. Rule number two, tune in to the new words that you learn. Use them as actively as you can throughout the class. The more you use them, the more I can help you and give you feedback. And rule three, open up to your classmates. Relax and fun. We're all here to learn. And this is a safe and respectful place to practice your English. So just have fun. By the way, at the end of class, if you want to stay in touch, I'll give you a link to all of my various services. You can follow me on Verbling to see my upcoming classes, read a tweet, talk to me on Facebook or Google+, see a video or old class on my YouTube channel, or even schedule a private class directly with me. Okay, that's enough about me. Let's find out a little bit about you. First of all, let's get my camera on. Uh, oh, once again, my name is not working right. You know, lately Google is having a lot of problems here. I don't know what's going on with this. It should say Verbling Teacher, but it just says John Eric. <laughs> In case I forget my name, I can look at the screen. Let me see if I can get it to work. There we go. Look at that. That's better. So, welcome returning champions and heroes, Carmen, Hande. Uh, Mireille, Javier, okay, Yuki, oh, Yuki's here. We missed Yuki in our, in our, in our short story class. Yuki, we missed you. Um, Hello. You missed another exciting installment of William Faulkner's Barn Burning, Yuki. Uh, so, sorry, I, I missed the previous class. Oh, no. Um, let's say hello to a few new faces. So the first person I don't know is Dodi. Hi, Dodi. How are you? Hello, teacher. Uh, I'm doing good. And you? I'm all right. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from Philippines. Ah, from the Philippines. Okay, very good. Um, am I saying your name right, Dodi? Yeah. Okay. Just making sure I got the pronunciation. And uh, Mireille, you're from Algeria, aren't you? Exactly. Ah, I remember. Sometimes I remember these things. And Polly, you're from Hungary, right? Yes, you're saying right. <laughs> okay, Polly. See, today I know it's Polly. And a new face whose name I can't pronounce because I cannot read Arabic. What is your name, my dear esteemed student, on the far right side? Can anyone read Arabic? Ibrahim, Abraham, Ibrahim. Abraham, Abraham. Yeah. How are you? Abraham or Ibrahim, you have got to turn on your microphone to say hello. See if you can turn it on. It's on the top of the screen. I can't share it with you, unfortunately. I can't share my screen, but okay. the microphone needs. Ah, there we go. Okay, hi. How are you? So, is it Ibrahim? Yes. Is it's right? Ibrahim. It's Ibrahim. Ibrahim. Yep. Nice to meet you. Where are you from? I'm from Saudi Arabia. 
from Saudi Arabia. What time is yeah. it there? It's uh, 1.30 uh, p.m. 1.30 p.m., okay. Yes. Not 30, look, 13. So, because you look, you look like you're in the dark, Ibrahim. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the, the light is turning off. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, I thought yeah. it was in the middle of the night. No, 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 uh, I'm, a, I'm a little bit tired today. Ah, uh, okay. I'm not feeling good, okay. Well, take a nap if you need to. Mm, yeah, no, not now, okay. Or after class. Maybe. All right. So, as I was mentioning in the other classes, the some features of the Google Hangout are not working recently. Google knows about it. They're trying to fix it. But I cannot share my screen with you. So, I have to trust that you've all clicked on that document over there in the chat window. And open it up. You'll see learning the, the graphic for learning through pictures, which is a... Uh, a little graphic with pictures in it, a hat, a boot, headphones, a heart. So that's on the first page. And we are basically finishing up our unit on food. So you can either go to the table of contents and click on unit two, or you can just scroll down to page three, because that's where we left off. Yesterday we heard two anecdotes about uh, a dish in your country. We heard one from Yuki, Yamagoyaki, is that right? Did I say that right? Yamagoyaki. Tamagoyaki, what did I say? Oh my god. Yeah, sorry. Oh my god. Yeah, that's something else. <laughs> that's, yama, that's, <laughs> that's Yamagoyaki without the Tama. Tama is very important. Don't When you make Yamagoyaki, you must add the Tama, right? That, that sounds good. <laughs> it sounds good. That's yeah. the important thing. <laughs> so we learned a lot. We learned about dashi and, and, and yes. bonito. Yes. I didn't know about bonito. Dashi is very important Japanese uh, compo component of Japanese uh, cuisine. Uh, uh, Jap uh, dashi is the uh, basement of Japanese soup, including miso soup. Yes. <laughs> so miso soup... So dashi, dashi is um, dashi is the um, basement of all Japanese cuisine. So, but dashi is always made with bonito, is that right? Yes, uh, uh, bo it, it it's prepared from uh, boiled boiled water with bonito. Uh, but some but some some sometimes we use uh, uh, seaweeds uh, to make dashi. Oh yeah. Yes. Because I was just so, so is because I'm saying miso soup a, is is a, seaweed a, with with some kind from, of either from uh, 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 either from uh, fried fried bonito or fried uh, oh, sorry, or, or um, uh, so fried seaweed. Hmm. But miso is made from rice, isn't it? No. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Huh? No, no, miso, miso is uh, made. No, 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 you are kidding. <laughs> miso is from uh, uh, so soybeans. Soy miso is from soy. Ah, because soy, uh, yes, because I ye yesterday I bought white miso and I thought it, I thought it was made from rice. That's why. <laughs> no, no, miso, miso, <laughs> miso is made from uh, soybeans, fermented soybeans. It a right. ferment soy beans, like uh, soy sauce. Right. Soy sauce. So, so uh, all the Japanese food is made from soy soy beans. Tofu okay. is also. Yeah, I know that, but mm. okay. Uh, maybe I just looked at the first ingredient because there's there seems to be uh, at least here there's three kinds of miso that you, that they sell. So it's yes. Yes. brown, a kind of a a red reddish miso, and then so a dark one. A kind of light one, and then white miso, yes. and, and the white miso seemed like it it was made from rice. That's why I was asking, but no, maybe. no not made, made from rice. Um, but, but you you use a dashi uh, to to cook Jap Japanese miso soup. Mm -hmm. uh, 
you, you know, uh, recently Japanese food is recognized as a untangible uh, world heritage uh -huh. by by un un UNESCO. UNESCO. Uh, and Dashi is highly uh, that is highly appreciated uh, as a as a very Japanese <laughs> as a as a high quality uh, as a high quality of Jap uh, as a high quality and uh, very good good quality for uh, for health uh, it is good for health it is natural food uh, as a natural food natural food of high quality <laughs> there you go yes. By the way, in Portugal, Fado, the music of Lisbon, was also recognized as a world heritage uh, thing <laughs> for UNESCO. What do you call it? A world heritage designation Untangib or something? Untangible world uh, heritage. Is that what it is? Uh, so, um, when you're eating your dashi, you can listen to Fado music from Lisbon, and you'll get two intangible world heritage cultural experiences okay so keep that in mind keep that in mind everyone okay well yesterday we heard an anecdote from Yuki and from Daniel about his Spanish omelet Daniel's not here today and we started to hear from some other people too so Pauly I was wondering if you had a chance to work on your anecdote it's not just how to prepare what you were talking about but the last time or a, a memory of when you had it last. So, for example, Daniel was telling a little story. I asked him a few questions, but then he turned it into a little story. Well, last Christmas, I remember my mother made us a famous, or her, my favorite dish because the whole family was together celebrating Christmas. Then he talked a little bit about the village, and then he talked about how, how she made it. So, I was wondering if you can tell us a little anecdote or a little bit about the thing you told us yesterday that I can't pronounce because I don't have it in front of me. So, Polly, can okay. you tell us? Yes, uh, I collected some uh, useful information <laughs> about uh, <laughs> our most uh, known uh, fish soup. Uh, did you remember fish soup name is uh, with Hungarian pronunciation Halászlé. Halászlé. Halászlé, yes. So, uh, this is uh, our most uh, known uh, Christmas uh, soup. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it it may it is made uh, in many different ways, mm -hmm. but all recipes ha have uh, onions, green peppers, and have... uh, ground re uh, red paprika. Uh, sometimes uh, 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 hot. Uh, pepper, hot paprika, green, ground, ground, uh, ground paprika, uh, paprika uh, among their ingredients. Um, so, so hang on, hang on, just a second. Let me just make sure I understand. Okay. So, the typical ingredients are apricot, right? Um, apricot and on, what else? Onions, onions. Onions. Onions, onions. Green pepper. Green pepper and ground red red pepper. Okay, so green pepper that's like I think that's the same as what we call bell pepper. Uh, yes, uh, we often uh, use uh, uh, the green pepper with the uh, hot flavor. Oh, okay, the spicy green pepper. Spicy green pepper, <laughs> yeah. All right. No. Uh, uh, first, uh, uh, I would like to. To tell you uh, about uh, how to prepare uh, these uh, special Hungarian uh, soup. Okay. Uh, okay. What Go ahead. Uh, first is. Uh, uh, now is now. Hang on a second. Okay. We need to clean. I have got the halas. Ibrahim is talking on the phone for some reason. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. I muted him. Go ahead. Uh, first, we clean the fish and remove uh, its teeth, teeth, tail, uh, uh, fins and scales with a sharp knife. So we need to clean 
the outside the the fish, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, uh, then cut out the eyes from the head. Jeez, it sounds oh. barbaric. <laughs> Very dangerous. Uh, wash the clean fish with cold water, mm -hmm. and uh, after that, uh, uh, open up the carp at its oh belly, 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 and mm -hmm. remove re remove the uh, chitterlings, chitterlings. That I don't know. Okay, I put mm -hmm. these words uh, to uh, our uh, chat window. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what that is. Oh. Never heard it in my life. Okay. <laughs> Hang on a second. And then slice it up for two centimeter thick slices. Hmm. And s salt. Chitterlings. Chitterlings are normally for the pig, so it's intestines. But okay, oh. I guess you can say I guess you can say it with a you can say it with the fish as well. Okay. So if, by the way, if you follow along, I'm I'm on page three of our notes document. I'm just taking a few notes. Um, don't forget, try to use you can use Daniel's um, Daniel's recipe as an example. Uh -huh. So so when you're talking about the process. Remember that our key words, our key connectors. Do you remember the ones that Daniel was using? So besides first, what are yeah. the other ones that sounds natural? Uh, yeah. First, what else? Uh, first, then after that, yes. Exactly. Uh, and, and after That's that, uh, and then when. That's it, okay. Okay, and then <laughs> slice mm -hmm. it up for two centimeter thick slices. And salt the fish fillets. Okay. Uh, and after that, mm -hmm. cook the head of carp and tall uh, and uh, the small fishes in water until uh, tender. Uh, next, uh, cook the chopped onions. Onion. 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 Onions. Listen, Onions. one little, just a quick note about pronunciation. Okay. Even though we may have two vowels, vowel is A-E-I-O-U, even though we may have two vowels in a word, we never pronounce both vowels. It's only the first vowel that's pronounced in 90% of the words. First vowel, not the second vowel. So even though you see onion, onion. right, we, the, the I gets joined together with the N, so it's onya, onion, onion, onion. onion. That's mm -hmm. right. That's it. That's it. By the way, Polly, this is, this is, uh, I'm not going to be able to take notes. I was going to kind of take notes and help you um, talk about the recipe, oh. but there's too much information for me yeah. to write it down. Okay. And there's something wrong with the Google Hangout because I'm not really able to write in the document very easily. So I'm just going to listen and give you some suggestions as we go along. Okay? Okay, okay. okay. So the first thing you're doing is cleaning the fish, taking off the scales, taking out the eyes, and washing it in cold water. Yeah. And then you, then you take out the, the intestines, the innards, the chitl chitlerings, which I've never heard before, <laughs> but I <laughs> guess, it's, guess it's a real word. And what do you do after that? Uh, so, uh, put all ingredients uh, mm -hmm. into a, a big uh, bowl and uh, uh, boiling. And boil them. Boil, boil them. Boil them. Okay. Yes. So, uh, after a, a, a few uh, hours. Uh -huh. uh, this dish is finished. So we uh, need to serve by carefully removing the fish fillets. Fillets. Fillets is a uh, fillets. Fillets is a bones, uh, 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 fish bones. I think. Right. Fillets. It, that, yeah, but in American English we tend to say fillets. Fillets. I've oh. heard. I've heard people in British English say fillets. Fillets. But that seems a weird thing because it's a French word. So 
I, I, as far as I know, it's a French word, so normally we don't pronounce the T. Anyway, I definitely would say fillet, fillet, but because it means that like you're removing the bones, absolutely. So it's a, it's just the meat. So you carefully remove, you carefully fillet the fish, take yeah. out the bones. Okay. Yes, right. Uh, after that, uh, uh, placing uh, them in in the plates. Uh, then use a, a, a big scoop. A big, uh, a big what? A big scoop, scoop, uh, uh -oh. scoop is a, um, uh -oh. spoon, spoon. <laughs> Wait a second. <clears throat> we had a we had a word for this when we were doing kitchen stuff, and Hande was in that class. Hande, oh. what do you call the big spoon in the kitchen? Oh, uh, I don't Hande. hear before. Big I know you spoon. you weren't you weren't here, but Hande was, right, Hande? Hum, uh, hum. I think I wasn't. <laughs> you were. I remember I you were in the class. I know. I know I was. But what <laughs> did What did we call the big spoon? In the, remember the picture of the kitchen? Uh, hey, it, oh Hey-do. my God! That's it. it was, oh, okay. mm. That's it. And it was on the the picture of the kitchen. If you're looking at our our notes, is on page. Hold on, I gotta check the page nine. I think. Yeah, on page nine, and it's number. Well, if you look on page nine, I think it's where was it? Well, nineteen, twenty, and twenty-two. Those three huh? things, and then in the front of the picture, number seven. Uh, I don't, I don't have my my notes open because I, I know I put the vocabulary for that picture in the notes, but um, we have spatula, the thing that's flat that you use to flip, um, like the omelet, for example. And the ladle, I think, was number seven, if I remember right. Anyway, just to show you that if you review some of the er earlier classes, or just go to the uh, vocabulary, which is on page two, w the word list, you can get some of this vocabulary, and it's in more than one language. Um, if I don't have time to update it, just send me the message. Send me a message and I'll do it because I try to add the vocabulary. But I also have the same vocabulary list in various languages. Hungarian, I'm not so sure. But I know I have it in Turkish and Spanish and French and things like that. I might have it in Hungarian, I'm not sure. So yeah. that you can you can really see exactly, you know, what I'm trying to say. Okay. Okay. This is finished and uh, we uh, we be able to eat. <laughs> so, I got the part about cleaning the fish and boiling right. it. I got all of that, and I got the I got the part where you're plating the fish in a fillet. Got that. But what about the soup? You, you're uh, boiling it in the soup. Is that? Yes, uh, but I uh, forget uh, uh, an important. Uh, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, we need to fry, fry, fry the the uh, cut these uh, onions before we putting into the boil. So, uh, 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 on on onion, 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 onions. We right. need fry the onions before uh, we put into the bowl. Okay, I will remember to fry the onions when yes. I'm making. I forgot Did. how to say it. <laughs> I forgot the pronunciation already. <laughs> Onions. Okay. 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 Uh, no, 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 no. The pronunciation of the dish. I forgot how to say it already. Can you can you write it for me in the chat window again so I can add it to the document? The 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 dish itself. Say it for me again. Uh, Polly. Yeah. The, the, yeah. The name of the dish again in Hungarian is. Okay. Okay. Holasli. Holasli. That's right. Okay. Like how lastly in English? Could you? Yeah, there I got it. Okay, how lastly? How lastly? Okay, got it. So that's all. That's all, but it's not all because I want to know: is this is this something? If you were living abroad, let's say you moved to the United States, would oh. you would you miss this dish? Is it something personal? Would it remind you of home? Uh, mm, I don't understand uh, what you asked me. Uh, would this would this remind you of 
being yeah. in your country if you yeah. had left. Oh. Yes. Who? Okay, okay, I understand. Uh, my girlfriend uh, mm -hmm. is my girlfriend's very love to eat uh, Hungarian fish soup. Mm -hmm. uh, if I we go going abroad, mm -hmm. but we can't to find a, a, a sweetable uh, taste uh, mm -hmm. abroad, just inside Hungary. Uh, right. Outside, outside all uh, other countries, I think can't to make appropriate uh, to Hungarian fish soup. <clears throat> All right. By the way, not to make, but can't oh. make. Can't make. Can't That's make right. uh, Hungarian uh, fish soup. Uh, I find a, a good uh, description about uh, these soups. I put this link. And when would you have this? You said this is at Christmas, right? Yes, we uh, often uh, make this soup uh, on Christmas, but <laughs> any time is possible. <laughs> any time is possible, even during English class. Yeah. Okay, very good. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. So, uh, when he was talking, everyone, when he was talking about the, the recipe itself, he was using the key connectors, the same that we used in Daniel's. So, those are there if you want to use them on page four. First, then, after that, See, first then, after that, and then you can keep saying then and after that just by adding an and. And after that, and then. If something happens at the same time or at a particular moment, you would say when. But basically, you could just keep repeating then, after that, and then when until you go through the steps and you end up with finally or last. So that's on page four if you want to talk about the description of the Spanish omelet. But I'm also curious to know about about you know your memory about having this or who would make it for you. So I'd like to also hear a little bit about the background uh, when when you remember having this or who would make it for you or what memories it brings back. Um, Mireille, I'm just curious. Uh, what is something that is personal to you in Algeria? If you left Algeria, and uh, what would remind you of being back home? What kind of thing is only made there? Mm, it's the couscous. The couscous. Yeah. Couscous, uh, couscous is pretty popular around the world. So, um, if I don't know, is there something special or something unique that makes couscous from where you're from different from everywhere else? What exactly. makes it special? Yeah, uh, well, I have a friend. She lives in uh, in Michigan, in the uh, United States. And uh, whenever she uh, uh, she describes me how they they do couscous there, I mean it's it's very wrong. It's the wrong way. Uh, I mean here is very delicious. Uh, we made it differently, totally different. Um, uh, well, in North Africa in general, we made this dish. It's very famous. Uh, I don't know. In the rest of the world, they just boil water and add it to couscous, and that's it. Uh, but here in uh, Algeria, we, we do it differently, and that's take us take us through the steps. First, then after that, finally, take us through the steps. How do we do it the right way? Um, okay. Well, uh, first of all, we have to prepare the soup. Because we, we we can most of us tend to uh, pour soup on couscous to eat it. Well, first of all, we uh, we cut uh, onions and garlic and uh, uh, and uh, hot chili, hot peppers, and uh, we put it on uh, on uh, what to say a bowl. Uh, is it a bowl uh, <laughs> or is it? Because when you think about mm, couscous, by the way, Ibrahim, I'm just going to mute you because we're getting a lot of noise from your connection, okay? So when you're ready to speak, you can turn your microphone on, but just keep it off for the moment because we're getting lots of background noise. Okay, so Mireille, mm -hmm. is it a bowl? Because when I think of couscous, I think about that, I forgot the name of the thing, but I think about that ceramic um, dish with the lid. It looks kind of like a triangle. Uh, tajin? Like, yeah, yeah, that's it, tajin. Uh, so, do you use that? 
No. But <laughs> oh, okay. Because I'm thinking uh, about Morocco. I, I, I went to Morocco once and I remember those things. Yeah. But okay, maybe I'm getting them confused. Okay, so you you put it in a bowl, is that right? Um, yeah, actually that uh, that uh, dish we, we serve couscous in tagine, but we don't ah, okay. cook it in tagine. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, we put all the, those ingredients in um, in I don't know in French it's a cocotte, cocotte. Uh, it's like Pasta? a big uh, um, a big or something. Mm -hmm. All right, and then um, let me just. Uh, uh, it's like a big casserole. Uh, right? Okay, a casserole dish. Yeah, and then we we add meat or uh, or chicken. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, on on that casserole, and then we 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 uh, add spices. Um, uh, Cuban and uh, well, there are a lot of spices, uh, the, yeah, and salt and pepper, all right, uh, with olive oil. Um, we mix all those uh, things, and then we we pour uh, um, the chicken stock. Is mm -hmm. that right? That's uh, right. That's right. Mm -hmm. And then we we add uh, tomatoes to make it uh, the, to make it uh, red to make the sauce red. Uh, all right, and uh, we just put it to to boil, and to all the flavors and the ingredients get along with each other. Oh wait, hold on, hold on a second. Hold on. First of all, we don't put anything to boil. Either we we boil it, <laughs> or uh -huh. we let it boil, or we bring it to a boil. But we don't put anything to a boil. We can put things to a vote, but we can't put them to a boil. So. At that point, we would let it boil, or bring it to a boil, or let it simmer. I don't know if it's a strong boil or if it's just lightly boiling. If it's lightly boiling, it's simmering. Yeah. Okay. And the second is let let the uh, let the ingredients mix, or let the let the what's the word? Let the tastes kind of mix. Uh, you're saying interact with each other, right? You let yeah. things interact with each other. Yeah. Okay. Because I just uh, wanted to be a little bit clear about that. So you so you you bring it to a boil, and you let everything <clears throat> simmer. It, simmer. Okay, simmer is a good word. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So um, we we are f finished it from the the soup, and then we uh, we move to the couscous. The, the couscous we. Uh, we we wash it with water, mm -hmm. and then and then we um, uh, okay. What's that word in English? I don't know. Like what is that word? <laughs> um, okay. Uh, yeah. Ev 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 um, evaporate. Evaporate. Yeah. We put it into an instrument. It's very special here in North Africa. Tell uh, us the name of the instrument. It's a uh, couscous. It's it's like couscous, like <laughs> couscous. Can you write it for us in the chat window? All right. Because then maybe I can also see a Google for it. Oh, I will just write it in Google uh, because the thing doesn't work for me. Okay, no problem. So we don't actually evaporate things. We we boil we boil off we boil off the water maybe. Yeah. Or, or allow the water to boil off. Cascus. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Cascus. Uh, it's like the uh, the those uh, gases that are coming from the soup. They 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 are up uh, to reach those uh, because the cascus have um, uh, have uh, tr uh, les trous. Uh, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. Uh, Okay. Yeah. Everything you're saying is clear so far. It's no problem. So it sounds so you're 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 getting rid of the water basically. Oh yeah, the cascas has uh, holes, million holes, uh, mill holes. Yeah, that instrument has holes. Okay, and uh, whenever we put that instrument on the casserole, it's like those gases are getting up, and they uh, make those couscous uh, evaporate. Did oh. you get the idea? Yeah, yeah, but let's be let's be clear about this. Casserole 
is not the same. Casserole is the food. Yeah. Casserole dish is what you're talking about. A casserole dish or a casserole, um, what a, uh, dish is the best word. It's the easiest to understand because you're talking about something which is going to be resistant to fire, right? It's like a it's like a strong ceramic dish or something like that. So the casserole dish, and the thing you put on top of it. It's not an instrument. An instrument would be like, you know, a computer or an instrument would be like a scalpel in surgery. So this yeah. is not a, it's not an instrument. I don't know what we want to call it yet, but not an instrument. And it's permeated. It has holes in it. It's permeated to allow the water vapor to escape. Yeah, exactly. Listen, if I google for cascus, cascus, mm -hmm. I I I don't see anything. Are you sure it's spelled with a k? Because in English, because I can't find any pictures of it anywhere. Um, okay. I'm trying to I'm trying to find some pictures in Google Images, can't find anything. So I wonder if we spell it differently in English. Um, maybe if I write it in uh, in Arabic, you would. Uh... Probably easier. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Can... All right. Hang on just a second. Let's see if I can. Okay, I see it. Let me see if I can quickly find a picture. I can't share my screen, but at least I can see it so I can help you describe it. Give yeah. me one, one second here. Yeah, this, uh, the, the Hangout is really not working well today because I can't share my screen. I can't type on anything. But that it's is really like a, a colander. I mean, it's like a strainer. Colander. Ah. Yeah. It's like a oh. strainer, a colander, yeah. Oh, I see it. I see it. Yeah, yeah. It looks like a colander. It's true. But she's right. It is kind of like an instrument <laughs> because, <laughs> it, it, because it sort of it looks like it, you can attach it to, to a pot. So it looks like it is kind of... But, but she's right. Carmen's right. It, it does look like a colander because it's permeated. It has holes in it. Yeah. Okay, so basically you're boiling off the water from the couscous. You're allowing it to escape through the holes. Is that right? Yeah. Why we do that? To make the uh, the couscous fluffy and uh, ah. yeah, it's not like uh, there is this. Uh, um, uh, you know, sometimes uh, when you put water into a uh, pasta, it's like it. Uh, uh, all the the, uh, the elements are are um, are with each other. It's like uh, yeah, mm -hmm. but w once you sticking it, together, so yeah, it stick. sticky, yeah, so it doesn't stick. Yeah, it doesn't. It is fluffy and nice and fluffy. Fluffy couscous is my favorite couscous. <laughs> yeah. Wow, I cannot find a translation for this. Okay, but yes. Sounds like colander is the right word, or something um, like it. Yeah. And finally, when everything is done, uh, we we just serve the couscous. We put it into that tagine or a big dish, and then we put the the, the vegetables uh, over over on on the top. We just uh, decor decorate that couscous, and we put the meat or the the chicken, and we pour the uh, finally we pour we pour the the sauce. Over the couscous, yeah, and it serves hot. There it you go. Served, yeah. And you say tangine as well. For I'm the sorry? for the way you say tangine for the thing that you serve it in. Yeah, uh, well, it depends on the areas you are living. Uh, and there are some people who would serve this uh, couscous into the dish tagine, and others they will just serve it into a big dish. Okay, very good. And what? Why is the tangine? Different or better than a big dish? Why, why, why use it? What makes it different? Just out of curiosity. Uh, it's it's more beautiful in the presentation. Uh, and uh, for example, when uh, when you invite uh, people to have this uh, dish with you, it's better to uh, uh, to serve the couscous in tagine. It's make it more. Uh, it's like you are appreciate those people. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. Wow, I'm going to serve everything in a tangine because I appreciate everyone. <laughs> yeah. My English lessons in a tangine. Okay, fantastic. So, sounds good. Um, 
I'm just curious, Hande, is there anything Turkish that we should know about? I don't know anything about Turkish cuisine. Oh, there is a lot of uh, delicious food you should know, Turkish food. But my favorite is something we call sarma. Sarma? Yes. Could you could you put that in the chat window just so I can see how it's written? Okay. Sarma. Okay. It's spelled just like it sounds. Sarma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and so tell us about it. Who Yeah. How, how do you make it? What is it? Okay. Uh, my um this is very um hard um traditional dish and my mother can't do it properly so my aunt used to do it for me when I was younger. And it's very tricky. Um, and it's interesting because maybe 20 years ago, when arranged marriage was popular, boys' mothers would look at girls preparing this, this dish. And if it's good, they consider them as a potential bride for their sons. Really? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's how hard this dish is. Um, like I said, we would prepare it together with my aunt. Um, so it was really fun when we visit her. It was like a festival for me. It was so nice. Um, sarma is basically uh, stuffed grape leaves. That's like that's like one of my favorite things in life. Stuffed grape really? leaves. <laughs> really. When when I was in, when I was in New York, uh, where I was for most of my life, I mm -hmm. I really only ate Middle Eastern food. Middle Eastern food and sushi. The the only two things I would eat. Um, and uh, just because I didn't like anything else, I don't know why. It wasn't I don't know. I was just and then I can't get it here. Then I came to Europe, and they they serve grape leaves at some places here, but they literally open a tin can and they're inside the tin can, kind of like rubbery, <laughs> and it's kind of nasty. So. Sarma is is a way of preparing grape leaves because grape leaves I thought was usually just stuffed with rice and things like that, right? Yeah. So yeah. how is it? But depending on how you make your grape leaves in Turkey, you get a bride. Is that right? Yeah, it was like that twenty years ago. <laughs> so okay, so tell us the trick. If we want to get married in Turkey, we have to make the right sarma. How do we get married in Turkey? <laughs> how does it work? What do we have to do? Are you going to tell us the secrets? Hyundai, are you there? Uh oh, she's not going to tell us the secrets of Sarma? <laughs> oh, she disappeared. Hyundai, are you there? Uh oh. Going once, going twice. She got we disconnected, I think. Oh, we got. We're never gonna hear. <laughs> we're never gonna hear the secrets. Yeah. Oh no. Her oh. her her husband is uh, uh, <laughs> cut off the internet cable. Well, she's back. Stop worrying. She's back. Can you hear me? Yeah. Now I can. Oh, that's that's happening. I don't know. R right when you were about to reveal the secrets of Sarma, yeah. the gods of Google cut you off. Yeah. Um, so t to tell us how it's made. Try to use those key connectors if you can. Key connectors okay. are first, then, after that, and then, and after that, finally, last. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, um, we use grape leaves, rice, uh, tomatoes, onion, garlic, um, what else? parsley, dill, uh, olive oil, lemon, lemon, tomato sauce, uh, salt water uh, to prepare it and I think you can use the spices you like uh, this first part my aunt would prepare because it's hard um, you chop the onion tomatoes, parsley, dill and garlic put them on a uh, frying pan and mix in with water uh, rice and tomato sauce after after that, you cook it for a few minutes. Then add lemon juice, 
olive oil and spices you like. Um, Which is one, one point. Uh -huh. adding, adding the spices you like, uh, look in the chat window. We can say a season according to taste, according uh, to your I taste. Chat window, oh, really? Uh, uh -huh. All right. I'll put it. Uh, okay, I'll put it in the other chat window. But anyway, a good expression is season according to your tastes. Season. Season. Because okay. se seasoning can be hot, can be salty. There's any many kinds of seasoning. So you can season it according to your own tastes. Season according to your tastes. Just like that, season according to taste. Your oh. taste. Okay. And so. then what? Okay. Um, then. Okay. That that's it. At this point, you don't want it to be um, cooked truly because the real cooking part is later. You don't want it to be. You don't want it to be cooked. So you you're going to cook it later. So you're kind of like just what kind of heating it, or you're just saying you don't want it to over, You don't want it to be overdone. It's just uh, you want the tomato sauce to um, cover the, all the things and the rice to just soft, soften it a little bit. Ah, uh, okay. So that's it. A few, just a few minutes. Okay, so you're you're kind of pre-cooking it. Uh huh. In a way, I mean, even if that's not the best way to explain it, at least it makes sense because if you were to really cook it, it would be overdone later. These are good keywords for you. It would be overdone if you cooked it now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Got it. And, uh, after preparing the mixture, uh, this is the hard part, and th this is the trick. The trick. Okay. Um, Everyone, listen up to the trick. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, you stuff this mixture into grape leaf leaves and roll it. The trick is it, it can't be bigger or fatter than your little finger. It really? It has to be really small, yeah. And you should roll them tight so it won't open along the way. That's what mothers <laughs> look for. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's all how they roll the grape leaves. Okay. Yeah, it, because it, it opens when you boil it later so it opens. in. The pan. So, um, when you finish with stuffing and rolling, you put them in a cooking pan and add water. Water should cover. Uh oh. Uh oh. We're losing her. Uh oh. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. We're never going to get to the end of our grape leaves. Oh no. Hyundai, come back. Oh no, we can't hear you. Okay, Hande, if you can hear me, why don't you sign back in, if you can, like you did before, because we lost you. All right, we'll wait for Hande to come back. Uh, we've got maybe time for one more. So Dodi and Alberto, uh, if you want to share anything with us, we've got maybe time to hear one more. And we can hear Hande when she comes back. So, what do you think? Either one of you? Hello? Yeah. He's prepared a dessert. I Fantastic. Dessert. Yeah. Oh, you mentioned this the other day, didn't you? No, not the other day, but the other day before, yeah. Yeah, it was um, <clears throat> Catalana something. Creme Catalana, wasn't it? Ah, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, it has uh, three steps on the in the top of the of the step of the dessert you you have to put crema catalana some some like the crema catalana yeah okay so <laughs> <coughs> hang on just a second Hande are you yeah, back yeah, yeah. we have it hang on a second Hande are you back she's yeah, back I'm here. oh you're back. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So we were just about to move on to creme catalana because <laughs> we thought you left. But go ahead, finish up. So it's the mixture, the stuffing can't be bigger than your little finger, 
it's got to be packed tight and wrapped well, otherwise it'll open up when you boil it. And that's how you know if the uh, if you've got. By the way, you you you're judging who? You're judging. In, 30 years ago, you were judging the woman, or you're judging the woman, yeah. So if she can make uh, sarma the right way, then she's worth it. Is that right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Got it. How's your sarma, by the way? Are you worth it? No. <laughs> no. It's bad. No. It's it's oh so my hard. God. I'm, I'm, I can't I'm, get married in Turkey. <laughs> I, I'm I'm pretty good at sarma, but I don't want to be anyone's bride, so I don't know if it's going to help me. <laughs> it was like that 20 years ago, so now boys, do, men do it. So. Oh, okay. So now, yeah. right. <laughs> now it's legal. So, so then you boil it and you're done. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah. You serve it with yogurt, and that's it. With All yogurt? Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. But yogurt, but Turkish yogurt is a little different than the Greek not, one. Well, actually, I think it is like Greek yogurt, isn't it? The salty, no? Uh, it's Turkish yogurt is salty. It's what? Sorry. Salty. Salty. No, salty no, with salt. No. With salt. It's uh, not. Okay. It's not really sweet, right? I don't really know because I didn't live in villages. It's probably like that in the villages. But is it sweet? Like, like you know, if you have yogurt in America or Europe, it's it's like, I don't know what they do. They add sugar to everything. It's not like that, right? It's more like a sauce, isn't it? The, the yogurt I eat is kind of sweet because oh, okay. I buy it from supermarket. Like, it's okay. a, it could be <laughs> salty in the villages. But would you want it sweet with sarma? That would seem strange, right? No, not really sweet, of course, but... It's not really sweet, the yogurt. Yeah. And so, you put the yogurt on top of it, like a. How do you how do you serve it with yogurt? Uh, you put it on the side. And ah, okay. Yeah, you eat it as you like, as you wish. Okay, very good. <laughs> so, I, I wasn't able to really take any notes because for some reason Google's not letting me write in the on the document, <laughs> but. Um, it sounded pretty good. It sounded like you're using the connectors. We have a little bit of vocabulary too. I can I, I wrote down two things, but what do you need to take away from this, Hande? What's some vocabulary that you learned? Uh, the pre-cook and overcook. And o overdone. Overdone. Okay. Overcook, and overdone they, is the same thing. Okay. And the other ones. See, oh, I can't see it now. It was season, season according, um, according, according taste, according to taste, according uh -huh. to your taste, according to one's taste. So just a way to say how something should be. Um, seasoned can be anything. It can be hot. It can be salty. It can be sweet. Well, not sweet, but seasoning can be adding any kind of extra ingredients. Seasoning it. Mm -hmm. um, because I guess in Portuguese we would say temperar. In Spanish it's probably the same, temperar, I guess. In Turkish, I don't know. But anyway, it's a general word. Um, look, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna give you all a few extra minutes um, because Alberto was going to tell us about a dessert. By the way, Hande, what was good about your, about your recipe is that it's personal. It was interesting to hear about your mother and your aunt and the, and the story behind it. It's really interesting. Uh, one thing I wanted to do in this class was to try to turn our recipes into little anecdotes because that way when you have to tell it as a story you'll remember things a lot better if it's a personal story so it might be something interesting to work on um, and depending on what kind of international English tests you take you sometimes have to tell these personal anecdotes um, so it might be a good thing to work on as a, as a little fluency exercise but Alberto, before we go, what are you going to make for us, and why is it personal to you? Well, uh, my dish is called gosua, and it's a bus dish, and uh, well, it's uh, it's lovely for me because uh, when I was a kid, my my mother prepared it to, to me because I I like it so much, 
then uh, it reminds me my my childhood. Yeah. It reminds you of your mother. Mm, my mother, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so the pronunciation is. Say the pronunciation again. Yeah, Gosua. Gosua. Yes. So the X in Basque is a is a S sound. No, it's like in Spanish. Oh, it's like in Spanish. Okay. Yeah, okay. more or less. Uh, softer, but like in Spanish. Gosua. Yeah, Gosua. Yeah. Gosua. Okay. Nice. Tell us about Gosua. How do you make it? What well, is it, and how do, what's in it, and how do you make it? It's a, a dessert, and the it has uh, three three steps, and uh, you have to to do it uh, to do them uh, uh, once by one, uh, one yeah, by one. Yeah. You have to do them um, in sequence, or you have yes. to do them one after the other. One after the other. Yeah. Sounds clear. Okay. Yes, because uh, you have to to use a bowl. You have to put. Uh, the lower uh, step uh, in a bowl. The lower step is uh, made by cream, mm -hmm. made of cream. Yeah, made of cream. Oh, so it's yeah. layered. And you make it in layers. Layer. Are, are, yeah, yeah. Are you, you're laying, you're layering it on top one thing on top of the other. Yes. Yes. Okay. So it's a cold layered dessert. Cold mm -hmm. layered dessert because it's in nivash layers. Yeah, then it's a uh, all of this uh, yeah, and uh, um, you have to to prepare the the cream, but uh, it's only uh, you you have uh, to whip uh, the cream, uh, adding some sugar with a bitter, and uh, well you you put uh, in the in the bottom of the of the bowl the the cream. Mm -hmm. In the middle of that, you have to to put some uh, soft biscuit. Um, it's like so, uh, soft with what? Like a cake, like but uh, thin and, and spongy. Yeah. Spongy. Spongy. Yeah. By the way, we call these lady fingers in English. Just so you know. Well, it's, uh, <laughs> there, there's a uh, because I, I know this from tiramisu, which is. A little bit similar. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like it's like a biscuit in GMC. Yeah, it's, it's, but, it's like but, this, yeah. but when you have, but in English, when you have something that's like light, sweet, and spongy, um, and it's and it's if it's in strips, we call them lady fingers. Um, so because uh, you said biscuits, which would be like kind of like round and circular. Yeah. So if it's if it's like if it's like Strips, we call them lady fingers, and they're spongy cake. And so you soak them in what? Well, then a spongy cake. Uh, but uh, the beginning, you you can uh, put uh, them the the spongy the, uh, the spongy cake in a dish with mm -hmm. some uh, coffee liquor, for example. Ah, okay, like. like and uh, they, the 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 cake uh, shock the the liquor and uh, and have the the taste. Of this, uh, of this coffee liquor, yeah. Mm -hmm. The cake absorbs the liquor. Yeah, absorbs. Yeah. Absorbs okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. And finally, uh, for the third step, uh, you have to to do something like uh, crema catalana or something like natillas in in Spanish. Uh, this mm -hmm. uh, custard in in English, yeah. Custard, right? Custard, or custard yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, and the custard is, is a mixture made of eggs, milk, uh, flavor, and sugar. And uh, you have to to mix them. Uh, you have to put uh, them in in a in a pan, and you have to cook all the all the mixture, but with uh, with uh, with careful with care. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You you have to to be careful because uh, when you cook the the mixture, uh, you have to put it in in lowest heating because in the lowest heating because uh, in you other have case to cook it, uh, you, have to, wait, you have to cook it over a low heat. Yeah. Because. Because in other case it burns. Ah okay. Yeah. It's and, and it tastes it, uh, and it tastes uh, bad. 
Then, then, uh, <laughs> yeah, don't, to... don't burn it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, when the when the mixture is, is made, uh, you can pour it in the top of the of the bowl. And uh, yeah, it's that's uh, that's the the. So it's so, it sounds dish. like it sounds like it's something between tiramisu and creme brulee. It yeah, sounds like it's like a mixture or, or similar. Yeah, it's it's like tiramisu, yeah, but uh, well, yeah, it's like tiramisu, but tiramisu is more more mixed than than, than this uh, dish, yeah. And this one is more what? More? Uh, it's more separated. All the steps are not separated. More separated. No, not more separated. More layered. Layered. Ah, layer, layer, yeah. more layered. It's more layered. You said it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. Um, Before serving, you you have to put it in the in the refrigerator for two or three hours. Uh, to 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 froze no not to froze but to to be to be colder yeah uh, so so you you have you kind of you firm it up in the fridge so yeah. otherwise like it would be too runny if if it wasn't cold is that it the the, the idea you get it kind of more solidified yes is that it I'm just curious because so you don't want it to be soupy no no uh, no all right. That's a good word, by the way. If you if you want to describe something as too liquidy or whatever, yeah. you can call it soupy. soupy. Yeah. So you so if you put it in the fridge, it probably solidifies it a bit better, and it will hold together when you when you're eating it. Listen, how are we going to try this stuff together? How we we've got to get together <laughs> because we we've got a we've got um we've got a full we've got a full dinner going here because we've got we've got a breakfast too. We've got a Tamagoyaki. We've got our Spanish omelet. We've got a dessert. We've got our we've got our starters. We can have our um, halas halasle. Oh my God, I can't say that right. That could be kind of our starter, with a side of couscous <laughs> and a few grape leaves. Not grape leaves, sarma. And we can finish off with our um, gosh. Oh my God, I forgot the name already. Hold on a second. Goshua. Right, Goshua. Yeah, we've we've got it. We've got a full international dinner here. But how are we going to try these things? When are we going to get together and try all these things? Hello. Who? <laughs> I'm, I'm just asking the group. How, how are we going to sample these things? I guess we're not. <laughs> <laughs> We'll I get guess magic, difficult. magic sarmas, magic foods, because you sent the magic cookies. That's right. That's <laughs> right. That's a good point. Well, I'd like, I'd like, I'd like all of you to please email me some of your dishes. Email them to me so I can try them, or send them to the chat window. I don't know if, if, um, I don't know if Goshua emails very well because it probably gets a bit sticky, but we can give it a try. <laughs> All right. Well, we're a little bit over time. We've got to stop. So, as always, if you want to reach me, you have all of my little contact information links there in the chat window at Verblink, Google+, Facebook, Twitter, or whatever. Get in touch with me there. Um, we're going to be doing a. Uh, we're going to be moving on to something new in learning through pictures next Thursday and Friday, and I'll be back on Monday morning at 9 a.m. GMT for. Uh, for the pronunciation classes as well. So, thanks for coming, everyone. Have a good, have a good Goshua. Because uh, I just like saying that word. And uh, questions or comments, just drop me a line. Have a good weekend, everyone. Bye for now. Bye. 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 See you.